I'm Renee Collins. I'm the IRS support worker for Métis Calgary Family Services. Today I'm going to help guide you through the website for the Federal Indian Day School class action. On that website you will find the claim forms, be able to download posters, there'll be other resources there that you may be able to access. Something called a Schedule K, which is a list of schools that are currently being covered under the day school class action suit. There's also contact information numbers where you can phone to try to get information. They also have a Facebook page where you can post questions directly to the people organizing the class action suit and they will respond to you on that website as well. My job in Calgary is to help provide information to people who went to a day school to help guide them through the process. One of the things that's very important is to make sure you tell your story as comprehensively as possible. Provide as much information as you can about the events that happened. Filling out this claim form may be emotionally difficult or traumatic for some people. If you're in the Calgary area, a survivor of residential school, and would like to access our elder cultural support, contact us at this number or send us an email. I'll have the number and email up again at the end of the video. The first place we should start is at the web page. The web address is www.indiandayschools.com. This is the official site. At the top of the page is a phone number that you can call if you have any questions. Or you can go to the Facebook page and post your questions there. Over to the right of the screen, you'll see something called Quick Links. Beneath that is a blue box that says Claim Form. Click on that link. This particular link takes you to a fillable PDF. You can fill in as much information as possible, then print off the document at the end. You'll also be able to save the document as a PDF to your computer or mobile device. Be aware that different internet browsers will handle the PDF document differently. When you're filling out the form, if you're experiencing any kind of emotional distress and would like to talk with someone, there is a free hope and wellness line that you can call. The number is toll free and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And there's also free legal assistance with the claim form available from Gowling. And the number is on the form here. This settlement is applicable to all students who attended and suffered abuse or harm at the Federal Indian Day School or Federal Day School operated by the Government of Canada. You have until July 13th, 2022 to have the form filled and submitted. This Federal Indian Day School Class Action Settlement Agreement provides compensation for any former day student who attended day school and who suffered abuse or harm when attending school. There is a list of day schools covered under this agreement found in Schedule K. The settlement provides for compensation for former day school students who both attended a federal Indian day school and federal day schools funded, managed and controlled by Canada and suffered abuse or harm from teaching staff, officials, other students, or third parties at the school. So any harm that any student may have suffered does not necessarily have to have been caused by a teacher. It could have been anyone from the school. To be eligible for compensation, the student must not have already received a settlement from Canada for the same or related incident at a federal day school or federal day schools as identified in this claim form. What is meant by that is that any student who may have already filed a legal claim against the school, receive compensation for any harm done while they were at day school, don't qualify for this day school compensation. They've already received compensation. However, a person may have gone to residential school, then later attended the same school as a day school student. Those two claims are two separate claims. Residential school claims have already been processed and handled some time ago and the day school is still something they would qualify for. So if you believe you qualify for day school compensation, fill out this form and do your best to provide as much information as possible. 
So on part one, fill out your name, middle name, last name. Other names are names you may have gone by at school. You may have had a nickname. Why those are relevant is that other students you went to school with or friends may only remember you by your nickname and not your full name. So by providing a nickname, it allows them to cross-reference your story with other stories from the same school. Provide your date of birth, status card number, social insurance number. You will need to provide a permanent address where you can be reached. It's important because when the claim money is sent, it will be sent to that address. It will not be direct deposited to your account. I'm told that all compensation money will be sent via secure mail, which is Canada Post. At this point, it's worth mentioning the scam alert going out to people who have applied for a day school compensation, being told that their compensation money has been approved and that the money will be direct deposited to their bank account. Neither Gowling nor Deloitte are asking for any banking information. This is a scam. Again, any compensation money to be paid will be sent via secure mail directly to you and not direct deposited to any bank. In part two, they will ask you the name of the school, the reserve, location, or community in which the school was located, the province or territory. They will also ask you the first year you attended or the age you were when you attended. They will also ask you the last year of attendance or the age you were when you completed day school. If you can't recall the age or the year that you started, you can work backwards from the age and year you completed day school and determine the start date or age from that. If you attended more than one day school, you add that to the list as well. To find the name of the school, you'll have to go to Schedule K. On there will be dates where the Government of Canada was operating or managing or controlling that school. Some schools were still in operation after those dates, but had reverted to the local school board for operation. It was no longer under the control of the federal government. So they were very specific in terms of the dates that are covered. Part 3 requires you to sign the form as well as a witness. The witness does not necessarily need to know your story or have read it. They're only there to sign as a witness to your signature. Part 4, Level 1 Harm. It gives the description. Verbal abuse or harm including mocking, denigration, threats of violence, sexual comments, or physical abuse or harm including unreasonable or disproportionate acts of discipline or punishment. If you feel that Level 1 harm was the worst that happened to you while at day of school, you would check off Level 1 box at the bottom of that page and then submit the form. You would be done. If you believe the harm you suffered was greater than that, where there was excessive violence that caused injury leading to hospitalization or sexual abuse, goes into level two, three, four, and five. And you can read through the different levels of harm to see which suits your situation. In part five, they ask for you to write out your story, what happened. A lot of cases, that story won't fit on one page. So what you can do is write it out on a separate page and then sign your name at the bottom, print your name and put the date and then attach that to the application. Again, make a copy, don't send the original, make a copy and attach the copy to the application form. In speaking with some of the clients, um, Initially, they may have felt that the harm wasn't too severe, that they would get um, a strap once in a while or the use of a ruler, um, but it wasn't anything out of the ordinary and not too much harm was done from it. And in talking to them a bit more, I would ask them, when you would get struck with the ruler, did it ever bleed? Did Well, sometimes comments would be, well, yes, yeah, sometimes. And I would then I would say, well, how bad was it? And then they said, well, you know, it was one time it was so bad I couldn't sit down for, okay. Um, then I just pursued that a little bit more. And, and it, they went from a level one to a level three in terms of their harm. Now, 
because the violence becomes so normalized, we're we're used to getting a ruler every day or getting beat up every day. Or, um, it becomes normalized. So consider the trauma that resulted from it. Um, in some situations, it wasn't necessarily physical trauma, but there was great psychological trauma that the person is still dealing with today. So give some thought to the actual harm that may have been done, and you can tick off the appropriate box for the appropriate level for you. In part five, they're going to ask for specific information. They'll ask you to provide names and description and positions of persons that were responsible for causing harm. Examples would be teaching staff, officials, students, or other third parties. In 5C, evidence of attendance, they're going to ask if you have any report cards, enrollment forms, class photos, any records that show that you attended school. In Part 5D, they're going to ask for what they're calling narratives. These stories or narratives can come from family members as well, people who may have been at home, your siblings, anyone that may have been a witness to or knew about the trauma that you were experiencing while you were at school. They're going to ask for any medical, dental, nursing, or therapy records that you may have. You may not be able to find any of these records from the time. However, you may be going through some therapy now in your life that is directly related to what happened during your time at day school. In that case, you can ask your therapist or doctor to provide a note stating that the trauma you're currently experiencing or being treated for is related to your time at day school. You would then take their note, make a copy of it, and attach it to your application. Now, if you're not able to provide any of the required information on the application, in Part 6, you can swear an affidavit, make a declaration that all the information you've provided is true to the best of your knowledge. Then you would have a guarantor, a notary public, an official, chief, counselor, Inuit leader, or a professional like a lawyer, a doctor, physician, accountant, police officer, people like that, that would sign as your guarantor. Any of these people can sign the sworn declaration by you. Anyone applying on behalf of a former day school student would need to have a court order or documentation that shows you have power of attorney over the claimant's finances. Executors and administrators applying on behalf of a deceased would require a death certificate, a will, Revenue Canada state form, or an order or grant of administration from a court or letters of administration from INAC. When submitting your form, you can choose what to have done with your document after it's completed. You can have it securely destroyed, returned to you, or delivered to a legacy fund. A legacy fund is somewhere where the documents would be archived, where future generations could come, access the documents, and do research as to what happened during the time people were at day school. You have the right to choose how you would like the forms dealt with after they've been submitted and processed. On the last page is a checklist of things that should be covered in this application. You'll need to attach a piece of government-issued ID like your Indian status card, driver's license, or social insurance card, etc. Or, if unavailable, you can have your guarantor sign for you on page 12 in Part 6. At the bottom, you will see a mailing address where the form can be sent in by mail, or you can fax it, or send it as an attachment via email to indiandayschools at deloitte.ca. If you're in the Calgary area, a survivor of residential school, and would like to access our elder cultural support, contact us at 403-240-4642 or email us at irs at mcfs.ca. If you have any questions, I can be reached through Métis Calgary Family Services.